my neighbors have been doing construction and it's driving me nuts because the sound of the jackhammering is non-stop. But that's not gonna stop me today because today is a beautiful day. Just look at this. This is an amazing day. And what we're gonna do is I need your help, first off, because I don't know how to pronounce words, apparently. I get a lot of comments on that. And one of them is this company that just made a pretty good looking crossover SUV, like a small SUV called the I-Pace. So say it with me now, Jaguar. Did I say it right? Jaguar. Jaguar. I'm not sure how to say it. Let me know if I'm saying it wrong. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the new Jaguar I-Pace and compare it to the Model X to kind of just break it down and see how it holds up because there's a lot of good press out there and I haven't dug into the numbers yet so I'm excited to see what we find. But before we move on, I need to give a big shout out to Wonder Capital for supporting the show. Wonder Capital helps people like you and me invest in commercial solar projects and earn a return on that as an investor all while enabling small businesses to go solar and help fight climate change. I did a really cool interview with Brian Bursick, their CEO and founder, just a couple weeks ago, so I'll link a card up so you can check that out if you're more interested in that, as well as you can learn more on the website at tazonomics.co slash wonder. So thanks, Wonder, for supporting the show, and let's get back to the video. <laughs> You see, there are a lot of Tesla killers being announced these days, and while a lot of them are concept cars, this one seems like it might have a shot, and a good thing about it is that you can actually order it. A lot of the other ones are just kind of ideas, cars that these companies are showing off, and I'm excited about all of these. I think that it's great companies are taking this somewhat seriously, or at least they're putting effort into making these cars. And when I started to look at each of them, I wanted to really show all of them, this was the only one that really stood up to being a viable competitor to Tesla. However, there are three areas in which I feel like it falls short. And I don't wanna say that that's the deal breaker, but certainly there were some areas that I think it could improve upon. is storage. Surprisingly, the iPace only boasts 22.53 cubic feet of storage, whereas the Model X, even with the seats folded up, has above 60 cubic feet, and if you fold the seats down, has 88 cubic feet of storage. We're talking almost quadruple the amount. The next issue, and this could be a big one, is the weight of the vehicle. And you might be surprised, but the I-Pace is a bit lighter. It's below 6,000 pounds in gross vehicle weight, which means in the US, you don't qualify for that kind of heavy duty tax credit that you get with the Model X. And that deduction isn't something you should ignore. If we take a look at the I-Pace, it starts out at $69,500, whereas the Model X starts out at $79,500, a full $10,000 more. They both would qualify for the full $7,500 tax credit here in the United States. And when you look at the deduction, this is where things get interesting. Because the I-Pace is under 6,000 pounds gross vehicle weight, the max deduction you can take is $18,000. Now, if you multiply that times a likely 32% tax rate, you're essentially saving $5,760 in taxes. However, because the Model X is over 6,000 pounds gross vehicle weight, you're able to deduct 100% of the vehicle's cost. So if we're just looking at these estimates here, here, that comes out to just over $25,000 in taxes you'd be saving, 
which is capped because that's the federal limit. Otherwise, it would be about $440 more in a deduction that you could take on top of it. This brings the total for these two cars to surprisingly different than what we started at. We're looking at $56,240 for the iPACE using just these basic options here. Obviously, there's taxes and fees and other kinds of things you add on, but the Model X comes out at $47,000 here, almost $10,000 cheaper after you take away that deduction. Now, this is only if you're using it for business, but a lot of people have freelance businesses and other ways where you can write this off. And this is something that I just think you really need to pay attention to because it makes, as you can see, a big difference in the actual cost you're gonna pay for this vehicle. And the third challenge with the iPACE is charging. It currently supports 50 kilowatts of DC fast charging, which gives you 80% of a full charge at 240 miles total in 85 minutes. Compare that to the Tesla supercharge and what the Model X is able to do, and you can see how it quickly becomes very inconvenient for long distance travel at all, really. Now, they did say that in the future it'll support faster rates, but as of now, it's a question. And with the shorter range, I think that this could lead to some people not deciding to go with the iPACE. There is a lot of good to talk about as well, though, so let's head back to the studio and just do a full deep dive into the specs and how they match up. So the first great thing about the Jaguar I-PACE is the price. Looking at the website, you can price it out between $69,500 and $85,900. So between 70 and 86,000 roughly. If you compare that to the Model X, you're looking anywhere between 79.5 and 140,000. That's even before some of the additional options that you can purchase on top of it. So you're looking at a pretty expensive vehicle. So really this is for for all intents and purposes, a different class of vehicle in terms of price that offers a lot of the same things, and notably, performance. Now, there was a drag race that was done by Jaguar on a racetrack with some professional drivers, and it's a little suspect to me. I would love to have seen that done in a more uh, real way, I guess, and less produced. Welcome to Mexico. On Saturday, this track will host the latest round of the ABB Formula E Championship, but we're here to celebrate the launch of the brand new Jaguar I-PACE with a very special challenge, showing that innovating from race to road has placed Jaguar at the forefront of the EV revolution. This thing is a beast. You've got zero chance. Bring it on. I need a faster car. Can you get me the P100D? Well, for the price of a P100D, I could almost buy two of these. Sure, sure, mate. That to me was very suspect because they had the car beating the Model X in zero to 60 two times, but they had a bunch of cutaways. Anyways, it's a very fast vehicle and it performs exceptionally well. The torque comes in at 512 pound feet and the horsepower at 394. If you compare that to a Model X, and it's hard to get these numbers because Tesla doesn't actually publish them, the torque comes in at anywhere between 387 and 713 pound feet of torque, and the horsepower is between 518 and 532. So, yes, the Model X appears on paper to be faster and more performant, but the zero to 60 time for the I-PACE is listed at 4.5, whereas the Model X on the lower end is 4.9, and on the higher end, the P100D, the $140,000 version, is 2.9, and this is what we see all over the place when you see it race Lamborghinis and things like that and win. That's the P100D version running ludicrous mode. So not really a fair comparison. So when you think about it, both of these cars are incredibly fast, faster than probably any car you've ever driven, and the Jaguar I-PACE delivers on performance. So at a cheaper price with a decent amount of range and an overall very competitive design, I believe the tech in here is pretty awesome. I don't love the buttons in that, but to each their own, you know, it is nicer to have buttons sometimes when you're driving to not take your eyes off the road and that kind of a thing. It seems like we have a legit contender on our hands, and I'm excited about that because 
there aren't a lot of them. A lot of the other vehicles that are coming out right now just look like concept vehicles. It still doesn't appear that a lot of these companies are taking the electric vehicles seriously. I'm excited that Jaguar is doing it because they have a very reputable brand that a lot of people love. And you know, for those folks that love the luxury vehicles, obviously this is gonna be uh, something that you like. So I'm curious what you guys think. If you're in this market, are you considering this? Delivery for the Jaguar I-Pace is set to happen in later of 2018, the second half of 2018. So obviously that's longer than if you wanted a Model X, you could get one right now in a couple months um, or get a new inventory vehicle in a couple weeks or, you know, so you know, there's that. But if you're in the market later this year, I think this could be a legit contender. And I'm excited to actually get my hands on one, see what it's like and actually share that experience with you guys. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys back here next time.